In this video, we're going to learn the basics of working with Fusion 360 forms, and we're going to start a new design. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this second part of our Fusion Form Mastery series, we are going to start a new design. So we're going to begin with a complete blank document, and we want to start by going to Create Form. I'm going to try to keep the videos in this series a little bit shorter, and I want to focus on specific aspects of the software. Most of the time when you get into a tutorial about poly modeling or sub D modeling, they generally start with an idea, an image, a blueprint, uh, and that's usually not how we model something. The majority of people that are designing generally don't have those same graphic skills. So if you're talking about 3D CAD design or parametric design, we generally don't have a sketch that we start with. We have an idea of the product, maybe some components that we need to fit around. So we're gonna start with a complete blank canvas and learn some of the fundamentals about how we can create these form bodies and really focus on some of the specific things that we need to watch out for. So as I've mentioned in the previous video, there are a bunch of different ways that we can actually create form bodies. We looked mainly at extrude revolve, sweep loft, and pipe, and then we took a look at the difference between quad ball and sphere. Now there are a few others, torus, cylinder, plane, and box, and these are things that we've explored at some point in time, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. But I do want to note that we are going to start with the plane option. So we're going to select plane, and we need to just pick a plane that we want to begin on. It really doesn't matter because we can move everything around. So I'm simply going to start on what is considered the right plane or the XZ plane. I need to pick where I want to sketch, and I need to make a new rectangle. From here, you'll note that by default, we're going to get a two by two, meaning that we have four total faces, and we have vertices at each intersection of those edges and at each intersection of the faces. We can reduce this number, making it one in both directions, to create just a single face. Also note that we could use the face option, and the face option allows us to free draw, and there are three different modes, simple, edge, and chain. If we take a look at simple, note that we have number of sides, four or multiple. Now, I've already mentioned this many times, and this is true no matter what software you work in, the ideal number of sides is gonna be four. So we are gonna always try and strive for four sides. So we can simply just draw and click four points. And the benefit of using the face method is we can continue to draw four points and they don't have to be planar or they don't have to really be along a, a certain axis in this case. So if I wanted to keep making a ring, for example, I could just keep drawing this. Also note that the other methods for edge we can select an edge and begin drawing. And again, it's, it's very similar. I can start coming out this way. It's just a different method. And then we've got chain. And chain is a little bit different in the fact that we are going to continue to draw. And it gets a little bit tricky depending on the method that you're using to start this. You can see I've started to overlap a few things. So you have to have a really good idea or plan for where you're going with that. So we're going to select that body that was just kind of a test and delete it, and we're going to focus on our single plane face. Whenever we're working inside of Fusion Forms, there are a handful of tools that are going to come in extremely handy, and then there are a lot of tools that you will use every once in a while. The ones that are extremely handy and that we're going to start focusing on are going to be things like insert edge, insert point, weld vertices, and then we're also going to look at things like crease and uncrease, but these are going to be a little bit further down in the design. So insert point and insert edge are extremely important. So let's start with insert edge. Insert edge allows us to pick an edge and then decide where we want to add a new division. In this case, I'm gonna manually enter 0.5, which will put it halfway, and I'm gonna say, okay. Let's rotate this thing around. Let's go to utilities and let's take a look at display mode we're gonna be working in box display mode. So it's important that we focus on box display mode whenever we're designing something new and we don't get too hung up on the curvature because things can look very different in smooth display 
And we really wanna focus on the underlying box display because that's what's controlling our curvature. So now that we have this division here, we need to think about what we wanna do with this and what types of things we can create uh, you know, when we're trying to modify this. So we now have two faces, and if we wanna to continue to add faces, we can go to Modify, Edit Form, we can select an edge, we can hold down the Alt key, and then we can extrude that. This is true for multiple edges. So for example, if I were to select these edges up here, and if it's giving you trouble, just make sure that you deselect any faces. We'll hold down Alt and we'll begin pulling this up. Once we have a certain number of faces or divisions that we're happy with, we can begin manipulating things around. I'm gonna hold down Alt one more time and I'm gonna pull this up. So now you can see that I've created essentially a three by three set or grid on this single face. But what happens if we need to start adding detail? So we wanna keep the number of faces or the, the count of these vertices that we have to manipulate as small as possible for as long as possible. It's gonna be much better for us to make the general shape out of as few of these number of faces as possible and then add the detail later. But what if I needed to, let's say, have more divisions on the bottom than we have on the top? Well, Fusion 360 has an interesting thing that we can do called T-points because the technology behind this is something called T-splines. From Modify, we can go to Insert Point and we can simply insert a point here. And now we've essentially divided this bottom edge up and we've got this point that's sort of in between these faces. It's, it's kind of a rule that we're breaking and this is not generally something that you can do in any other poly modeling or subdivided modeling software, but it's something that we can do here. Now, if we were to use Alt and three to go into smooth display and Alt and one to go back to box display, nothing looks really different here because we haven't made any changes, but let's go ahead and, and let's modify that. Let's select this edge, go to modify, edit form, and let's simply pull this up. Now in box display, everything looks okay. But if you're using Alt and 3 to go to Smooth Display, you can see that we have a very different result. So again, Box Display looks okay. And Smooth Display, this is the end result. This is what we are turning into a product, a surface, a solid body downstream. So again, we didn't have to have the additional edges or divisions on the rest of the surfaces, but we were able to make this nice smooth transition. With anything, there is going to be a limit. We're gonna to get to a certain point where the geometry that happens on this face becomes uncontrollable. Because essentially the mathematics in the background are looking at the control frame that we're designing, and it's trying to make this face match all the curvature inputs that we've given it. So this is okay in some cases, but in a lot of cases we need to be extremely careful. So I'm gonna leave it like this and I'm gonna stick with the box display, but I wanna go back to that right-hand view and I wanna talk about ways in which we can divide this up to give us that level of control without having to worry about these T-points. And again, these T-points are fine. They are able to be used inside of Fusion 360, but it doesn't really convey to any other surface or sub-D modeling program. So you're gonna to have to understand how to divide these bodies up in order to get the level of detail that you need. If you're using other programs like um, NPower has something called Power Surfacing for SolidWorks. It's also a plugin for other software. They have an interesting take on this called level of detail. They actually let you select a face or a group of faces and they'll use this level of detail to allow you to subdivide a small area, add these features that you need and then sort of jump back out of it. So you can think of it almost as a form body inside of another form body. It gives you that extra level of detail. In Fusion 360, again, we can use these T-points, but we're gonna go to Modify, Insert Point, and we're gonna try to divide this up so that we have some edges that we can carry on. Now, it would be very easy for us to simply go here to here and say, okay. And what we've done is we've created a three-sided patch and a four-sided patch. We've got one, two, three, four on this side, but only three on this side. If we look at it in smooth display, you can see what happens. That curvature starts to follow that edge. Now, again, this might be okay, but remember we're trying to avoid three-sided patches whenever possible. 
So I'm going to go to a right view. I'm going to go back to my insert point. And instead of actually taking it to that corner, I'm going to take it to the middle of this edge. When I go to the middle of this edge, I have created a three-sided patch here, and I've now got an N-gon or a five-sided patch over here. So again, that doesn't really solve our problem because we're still creating these three-sided patches. The way to make this happen is for us to add a four-sided patch to give us the level of control that we want. And then we can come back and we can divide or delete it up how we need to. So for example, if we take this, noting that we've got one, two, three, four, and five sides already, we don't have a great way to break this up to make four sides on both unless we simply come straight and we create another T-point. Now, that's what we're trying to avoid here. Everything over here is four-sided, everything here is four-sided, and everything below is four-sided. So how do we divide this up in a way that makes sense? Well, we know that we want four-sided patches. So if we try to come just sort of to the middle of this, we don't actually, we're not able to do that in Fusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the middle point here. I'm going to say OK, noting that we did create a three-sided patch. Then I'm going to come back to Insert Point. And I'm going to break this one up in the middle and say OK. What I've essentially done is I've created a T-point. So this T-point now can be moved around. And you can see that what I'm doing is I'm creating a four-sided patch here. Now that four-sided patch still has that T-point on it, so we still have to deal with that. But this is the starting point for actually breaking this thing up. So I can now take this. I can come over here and say OK. And all I've done so far is I've carried that geometry just an extra level down. These are now four-sided, but this one here is five-sided. So we've got one on the bottom, one on each side, and then two here. So let's take a look at another tool called Weld Vertices. So we know that we've got this four-sided patch here. Let's go ahead and weld these two together and take a look at what we have. So we've got four sides, one, two, three, four. We've got four sides over here. We've got four sides here. And all the rest have stayed the same. Now, we have to keep in mind that this might not be ideal for us. Uh, depending on what we want this curvature to do, we might have to have a little bit more control over this. And you'll notice that uh, this is, honestly, this has produced more problems than it solved. But there are ways for us to deal with this. We can go into Repair Body, we can select it, we can take these T points that are created and turn them into star points. By simply clicking on them, we can convert them back and forth between T points and star points. And we can take a look at the result. Now, we have to be careful with the rest of the surface because obviously we want nice clean geometry. But you can see that this result here, if I use Control 4 to hide the edges, this looks pretty good with the exception of this corner right here. We've got something that's kind of, uh, that's going on in this corner. Now here's where we have to make these very early design decisions, right? Because in this case, the T-point actually looked fine. So if we don't need any additional level of detail, then we should stick with the T-point. If we need more control, then we need to start dividing it up like this, but we need to do it several faces before so that way the control happens where it needs. So in this case, we would need to continue to use insert point, and we would have to break these up into additional four-sided patches until we arrived at where we wanted. And again, we can't just click in the middle of a face, we can click on edges, um, but we just don't have the available option to just click in a face. So here you can see that we made two three-sided patches, but we can select this inside edge and hit delete to turn it into a four-side patch. And then we need to worry about moving these vertices around in order to make this work. But again, these are the kinds of decisions that we need to make whenever we're designing a product and determine what the level of detail is that we need and whether or not we, we have to go down this sort of rabbit hole of dividing these up. And I will say that dividing these up when you have the basic shape already is much easier than it is once you've added a whole lot of level of detail. So let's go ahead and let's undo some of this. I'm going to go ahead and delete this face and I'm going to go to modify weld vertices and I'm going to put this back here 
And I'm going to weld this vertice that's sort of out in the middle here. And I'm going to say OK. And now we've gotten back to the situation where we've got that T point. Now here is another thing that we want to talk about before we get too much further into this course. I am going to go ahead and use repair body again. I'm going to select this and allow it to auto repair. And you'll notice that we still have some surfaces that are pulling on the side here. And the reason that we have this is because we are going from a situation where we've got a four sided patch on all these other edges and we've got a five sided patch here. So if we're going to try to fill this in, we can use fill hole and you can see that it automatically makes a triangle for us and it has a four sided patch over here. So it's trying to create what we needed originally. For our purposes, however, that is not the geometry we need. So if I were designing something off of this, likely I would use the T point, but I would bring it all the way to the edge in this case. So in this case, that's going to give us the cleanest surface, and it's going to allow it to carry that curvature exactly where we want it and give us the level of detail that we need. You'll notice that we don't have a ton of additional edges, and we could likely delete that edge and take a look at the curvature. And you can see that the curvature sort of disappears a little bit sooner. When we have that edge, if we do undo and redo just to see what it looks like, you can see that the curvature doesn't actually change that much. There's not that much of a difference between it. And that's because Fusion can handle those T points. So we are able to sort of get away with this. And I don't want to call it a bad modeling practice, but just note that that really doesn't transfer over to anything else. If you're trying to move into 3D Studio or Maya or Alias or Blender or Cinema 4D, any of these other software packages that are true poly modeling packages, you're not gonna be able to do this kind of trick. But if you're planning on sticking with Fusion 360 and parametric modeling, then you can get away with this in some cases. So that was a sort of a basic introduction to working with patches and adding edges and removing edges and the way in which we need to approach the layout of our design. If you have any input on a product that you want to design, please leave it in the comments and we can approach it in this series and we can try to replicate some of that geometry. My plan is to continue talking about some of these basics to make sure that we understand the foundation before we get into building something out of all of these tools. At this point, we can save this design if you want to. We're not going to be reusing this for anything. It's just going to be sort of the starting point to understand these tools. From here, I would suggest that you carry on just playing around with this, breaking it up in different ways, and then we can talk about the next steps from there. If you have any questions, obviously, please let me know. I appreciate any of the feedback. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.